Good morning. Today is September 25th, and we are going to start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. <sighs> this people draw near with me, draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. Isaiah 29, 13. On many occasions, Jesus condemned hypocrites who draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He also warned that those who regard, whose regard for the Lord is taught by the precepts of men are far from him in their hearts as well. Our understanding of God and our reverence of him Come not through the traditions of men, but through revelation from heaven and through gratitude for his bounteous goodness and mercy. Those with integrity of heart draw near unto the Lord with their lips and their hearts. They understand that the surest indication of our heart is how we think, talk, and act, what we do for others, which manifests our commitment to God and everlasting things. We are to turn our hearts to him with full purpose. We are to come unto Christ with integrity and remain permanently and faithfully until the end. All right. Today is Isaiah chapter 49 and <clears throat> it's lit up red. So it's the gathering and restoration, and there's a little bit of yellow, which is messianic, um, but it is lit up red. Um, Messiah shall be a light to the Gentiles, and shall be and shall free the prisoners. Israel shall be gathered with power in the last days. Kings shall be their nursing fathers. Compare First Nephi 21. Okay, so. Uh, Not a whole lot, lot stood out to me, um, but just verse 16 is um, the messianic verse. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. And I believe we talked about this verse in when we were in the Book of Mormon, about how the imagery of thy walls being continually before me. Uh, I don't know. Some of the imagery is when you stop to think about it, you know, well, you, if you just take his words at face, face value or if you, I don't know, the imagery is interesting. Um, what am I trying to say? I've tried to say that if you take the words literally, and you think about them instead of just like, I don't understand that. But if you think of walls continually before me, you can't move anywhere without seeing the wall is just right there. You're always stopped. And this wall is here and it's all you can see and it's all you can think about. How do I get around this wall? Why is this wall in front of me? And if Christ is saying thy walls, so this wall is me, my troubles, my sorrows, struggles are constantly before him then that's all he sees all he sees is me constantly my you know anyway i feel like i'm rambling now but that's what i think of when when i hear imagery of that that kind of language anyways moving on to the side by side it's a long one it's talking about covenants um, to think that you as a faithful servant of God have a personal covenant with him what an august honor uh, august 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 it's spelled like august okay uh, it is as though there were a spiritual contract in place with his signature written nobly and clearly across the base of the scroll and yours just beneath. It is, in fact, even more wondrous than that. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, said the Lord. Thy walls are continually before me. 
the image of the Lord's suffering on the cross to take upon himself the sins of the world, yours and mine, as evidenced by the wounds in his palms, evokes within us a humbling spirit of gratitude. It is through the atoning grace of our Lord that our names, yours and mine, are written there indelibly on the palms of his hands, just as the walls of our homes are continually before his eyes. Moreover, he, in turn, is written upon our very inward being. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward, inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. That's Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-three. Being inscribed of God through the holy covenant, we are ourselves, as Paul declared, the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. In, It is a mutual inscription, this covenant with God. We are t the document of the covenant. We are the epistle of Christ. We are the thinking, moving, living scroll of agreement. He has affixed his signature to our hearts, and we are eternally grateful. The outward manifestations of the sacred promises of the covenant, baptism, the bestowal of the gift of the Holy Ghost, the conferring of the priesthood, the sacred temple ordinances, all of these are authorized and indispensable events through which the power of godliness is manifest. But the covenant itself is written upon us by the finger of God. He promises that everything that he has shall be ours if we are true to these personal covenants, all power, glory, dominion, and life everlasting. What cause of thanksgiving could be greater than to know that his name is written upon us, upon our hearts, upon our very being? What impetuous, no, nope. impetus to gratitude could be greater than to know that he loves us and extends to us the universal blessings of being his heirs, the children of the covenant. In moments of quiet, rev quiet reverence, we savor the joy of being able to bring glory and honor to our creator and redeemer through obedience to the personal covenant he has made with us. We send prayers of gratitude heavenward and make the commitment here on earth to walk in the spirit of valiant loyalty forever. Now that's some imagery, which I haven't really thought about before, about we are the walking, talking, moving covenant scroll. It's not just promises made at baptism and in the temple. It should be written in, on our hearts. His signature should be there and mine should be too. All right, now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. Today is September 25th, and this book comes from the Book of Common Prayer. Our everlasting God, who has ordained and constituted the service, services of angels and men in a wonderful order, mercifully grant that as thy holy angels always do thee service in heaven, so by thy appointment they may succor and defend us on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. <sighs> Alright, that was Isaiah chapter 49. And next week we do 50, and it looks like we're not skipping any. So 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and 57. That's next week. Also conference next weekend that snuck up on me like no conference has ever snuck up on me before usually I'm prepared like the month before or you know two months before I'm like okay how am I going to prepare for conference none of that but it's going to be great we're going to have a great time and we're going to learn lots of stuff I'm excited I love you all I will see you tomorrow